it's an uh, occasion a uh, few people will get this opportunity and I got it and I have to say thanks to all my teachers and I'm very happy to see my teachers sitting in front of me they have seen me growing as a young neurosurgeon I, I chose this title because of my passion towards arts renaissance it is from Michelangelo and to myself. Why I like Michelangelo, we all know about Michelangelo. He was called as the Renaissance man. He was born in Italy, Florence. He is a sculptor and a painter, an architect and a poet. It was that time in 1475. But why, why I like Michelangelo? Because the way he has created some of the sculptures, some of the statues, we all may have seen in, um, uh, in the photographs and many other things, but few may had a chance to see them live. To say a few words about Michelangelo, his father was a person who was doing merchandise in, in marble. So at the age of 15, uh, he did this, this art, this one, I think the green one. So he, he, he did that, you can see that, this Madonna of stairs. This is at the age of 15. He was just 15 years old when he did this beautiful piece. Then where he went, these two things came, this unimaginable, unimaginable statues. Can you see these statues? One is the Pete, a Peter. You can see that, that is in 1498. He was still young and he was asked to do this. He was asked to create this sculptor wherein the Jesus was carried by his mom, the Mary. This is one of the most famous. And the next one is statue of David in 1504. <coughs> if you see these sculptures, how beautiful they are. They depict everything in the body. Every beautiful structure, the shape and size. Now if you look here, how he made this. He was asked by his, the then people who were ruling the Italy and gave permission to allow him to do some anatomical studies. To do some anatomical studies in the church hospital in Italy. So he has to go and see the corpses and watch them, observe them. Many, many corpses and then start doing. So his art became better and better. Now, uh, for the sake, I go back to this picture, see how he was and how he has done this. There's a change in his experience while he grows. He was what, just about less than 30 years by the time he completed this. And he lived for very long years. Then imagine that so many beautiful sculptors he has done like this and the arts and the paintings. These paintings show a beautiful anatomy of a man. All these things came because he observed, he learned much from the dead bodies, the cops. The other person who I always dreamt and we all know about is Leonardo da Vinci. He is called as not the man, but he is called as uh, Renaissance polymath. Why I say yes is that he still is being called as Renaissance Moth, polymath because he was a universal genius. He didn't stop with anatomy alone. He was an artist, painting, engineering, sculpturing, inventions, science, music, astronomy, botany, and so many things. You can see the picture here, or the one on this side is the most copied and most used diagram which you see on this side. 
and he has done so beautifully the only problem was his notes were very awkward he has put the notes he was the first person to draw the diagram of a uterus and a, and you can see the uterus and there is a baby there is an amazing his imaginations but what happened how the man who created mona lisa the great man leonardo was again was given the permission to dissect human corpses at the hospital of santa maria nuova in italy so where these guys were doing and what these guys were doing i was wondering when i was thinking about these two people i was just thinking that how they became such a beautiful sculptors so you need to be a sculptor but you can't become a sculptor by imagination you have to see the corpses you see the body we went back to sushruta of india we realize even those days there are a lot of literature which says they were doing lot of work with dead bodies i went to the literature and i found a very nice uh, journal this is an article special article on the birth and evolution of neuroscience through cadaveric dissection now here you can see the gallon there is this there there is gallon there, there is gallon there you have the green one this <coughs> that's 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 where this green uh, dr gallon and gallon was doing lot of work in cadavers and he was able to tell about the you know the vein of gallon we all know about it so they were opening the skull and they were doing all the research that time not only that uh, many of the scientists were uh, doing uh, skull uh, sc- uh, ne- neurosurgical uh, opening of this sc- uh, skull and then they read uh, about the brain on criminals who were uh, sacrificed for their crime and here you can see dr bell and then here there you can see brown sequat so when you go through this history it was amazing to understand about these people in the modern era early modern era came thomas willis there is our uh, willis triangle willis uh, circle of willis who wrote on cerebral anatomy and there also humphrey day humphrey ridley started confirming what willis said yes here is a circle of willis and when you want to see the circle of willis i'll show you later on and how it was how beautifully it was being demonstrated and charles bell and magenti they had a beautiful counteractive reaction i mean uh, uh, they they have a very good relationship which uh, made them to act more towards anatomical dissections to say a few words about the spine and the percival pot brown sequat and john curvilar they did a lot of cadaver studies in spine however these cadaver studies were not continuously going on until this flexner report in 1910 came and it started doing the revolution in europe and that is the one has turned back to harvey cushing harvey cushing on james walker's gesserian ganglion and trigeminal neuralgia says only after a great number of operations at the autopsy table can one satisfactorily train his reflexes to appreciate the degree or force which it is necessary to apply at the edge of the ganglionic dural sheath in order that it may be split and the gesserian ganglion exposed by lifting away its superior covering and only after repeated operations on fresh cadavers possessing skulls possessing skulls possessing skulls of various indices did the writer feel justified in dealing with the ganglion at the operating table and confident of removing it in in situ so what does it mean it means that you need a lot of cadaver training before you really become a surgeon now that is what i was comparing with michael angelos his statues the way the statues become mature and mature and we become better and better the dissection of the today you know here is uh, professor yasar gil and the late rodan junior and they have done in the present era i have said about the history 
I was just going to about myself, what I was doing as a young doctor in Madurai Medical College. This is my college. Now, uh, I, I think that my professors can recognize Professor T.S. Ranganathan, who is in white and white. And he was the one uh, who has written that book on T.S. Ranganathan anatomy book. Many seniors may have read that. Apart from the Gray's Anatomy, and you also see Dr. Yan Subramaniam standing there. That is our uh, Institute of Anatomy uh, lab. And uh, here is, I think, uh, nostalgic. It must be nostalgic to Dr. Suresh Babu, Dr. Professor Dr. Ravi, and all Madurai students. It must be nostalgic. That area, the area, the area where we, we sat, where we dissected. I hope that everyone must have, uh, I mean, must have put their foot here somewhere at some time. Am I sure? From MBBS to our neurosurgical career. Now, one of my best teachers, Professor Banimani Banamati, wanted to say this. Dear doctors, in this gathering of eminent neurosurgeons, some may be familiar with me, some may have heard about me, others may not be aware of me. I am Dr. Banamati, anatomist from Madurai Medical College, teaching anatomy for nearly 50 years. Good morning. The name anatomy is derived from the Greek word anatome, which means I cut or dissect. Thus, dissection forms the main part in the study of anatomy. While anatomy is the eye-opener for the budding doctors, dissection is the tool to make masters of surgery. Fine dissection, clean dissection, perfect dissection, complete dissection and a thorough knowledge of Cunningham builds up the talented surgeons. Dissection hall is the birthplace of surgeons, I can say. To name a few students of the Esther years, top neurosurgeons of today, Dr. Suresh Babu at Chennai, Dr. Parthiban at Coimbatore, and Dr. Muthukumar at Madurai. My memories about them. Suresh Babu had a wide and deep knowledge of anatomy. Parthiban, a good dissector, will be satisfied only when he completes the dissection. Muthukumar, a soft-spoken, sincere student, always interested in correlating neuroanatomy and clinical anatomy. Today, they are internationally recognized. I am very proud of them. Dr. Parthiban, the importance of anatomy, you yourself have stressed by giving this opportunity to your professor of anatomy. Thank you. I wish you success. Excuse me. Yes, she is now 72 years old and uh, uh, when I asked her, uh, when I communicated with her, she was laughing and she was speaking to me maybe after 40, 45 years ago. So she, she remembers very well and uh, uh, whatever we did, you know, she literally, uh, she has to send me out of the anatomy lab because the seniors have to come in the next batch. When we can't uh, dissect the popliteal nerve, you keep uh, dissecting through and through and through us the your posterior knee joint and uh, we know you don't like to go out of the anatomy because you know you have to come only after three four days or next week it's very difficult to leave that area but she has to force us out so she recollected her memories now from there our life begins in anatomy as a surgeon i try to show this beautiful fresh cadaver dissection of one of my uh, friend uh, who i made friend befriend uh, in uh, the past uh, one year, Dr. Victor Hugo, it is a fresh brain. It's a very fresh brain. Just dead patient, it is in Mexico. You can see he has done the 
craniotomy, frontal lobe. Este, vean, aquí que están viendo ustedes, que es este nervio olfatorio, ¿sí? Y aquí atrás ven ustedes Showing the optic nerve on. lo que es, ¿sabes qué? Esta, se me hace que no está grabando lo que yo quiero. Yeah, why, why that becomes important? Now, why that becomes important is that um, you apply the same thing in our surgery. So you apply the same uh, any, any aneurysm or whatever tumor in the pituitary region, supracellular region. We do the same thing, nothing different then. So if you, if you have the habit of uh, doing anatomical dissections, regularly our surgery becomes easier. So the subfrontal approach and subfrontal surgery. So there is not much difference like what we were discussing in the morning also. Now here in spine. If you are not, if you are not in teaching but for example you are very experienced then you can put the square in your mind and set up put the drill. Sometimes you used to say that uh, you say, where is the square? Suddenly my students will ask you always tell about the square, now we have not put the square. The square is put in the mind. But if you want to teach and demonstrate, do the square, the paid square, do it, go to the center. Many times your center may not correspond to the dome. So there you should have some adjustment. And this is the place you should have some adjustment, as uh, Kiran was also telling about with this. Anatomical studies are different from your patients. Your patient is on table. So you read in your uh, CT scans what is the lateral mass and where the vertebral artery is. Then you can place your lateral mass close to it. I think you can go to the uh, camera. To push your drill, you just first have to make an entry point. Okay, this is the entry point of the. You, you have now marked the entry point. Now from the entry point, superior and lateral, slowly and slowly towards the superior lateral quadrant, okay? And when you do that, you can do this movement. You can see here, this movement will help whether you are reaching the proximal cortex. Yes, I am reaching the proximal cortex. <coughs> I am reaching, I am reaching, yeah. You can, you can see that yeah. a small jerk. So, so why this is very important? If you if you put a lot of stress, you straight away go in, and you may break this lateral mass. So that is why it should be very gentle, precise, and superior laterally. Now after this, you can always put the uh, probe and see. You can see that. You can see very nicely. You can feel it here. Now you can also see this movement of this soft tissues here. I have to see whether, yeah, I think probably I can drill some more drill. Let me see. Looks okay, looks okay. This shows that how much the uh, cadaver dissections and teaching helps to show more experience. And you can see here, uh, this is about the cadaver uh, workshop. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, where we work, uh, we were demonstrating the C1 um, lateral mass screw fixation. And once once we do this, is also a fresh cadaver. Once we do this, uh, we can demonstrate to the students in the in the cadaver. So I I put my lot effort in cadaver uh, education. And this uh, what happens in your in your life surgery. Same technique. There, there may not be much, much difference um, between uh, the cadaver and so the moment we start practicing in cadaver and cadaver and cadaver, nothing, nothing beats anything. Now see the same technique, but see one lateral mass. Uh, I've seen the students; they change immediately after the cadaver dissection. Their their experience goes very high. Their confidence is extremely very high. Like in the morning, somebody was telling about that we should attend more workshops. More than attending the lectures, it should be on workshops, cadaver dissections, 
do more kind of a work. Now you can see here, this is another one which I liked and you know, I did, we used to do the transthoracic approaches. Now you, s you can see the reality. Transthoracic approach beautifully uh, opened up and then you enter, enter into your gap yeah. There you find very nicely and you can do the cervical thoracic junction very beautifully. I've been involved in this for many, many years, not now, no, for a long years. Uh, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, cadaver dissections in 2006 in Jaipur, VP Singh was there, and there is Professor Jileli in Mumbai. Uh, Jileli is the, uh, now the chairman of the WFNS Spine Committee. I work very close with him. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Victor Hugo, I said about Victor Hugo, this is, uh, th th this is Victor Hugo. He's uh, a very, very, very excellent neurosurgeon, neuroanatomist. Excellent neurosurgeon and neuroanatomist. Uh, we were doing the teaching program for the young students of Nepal. Uh, this was uh, teaching the young students of Nepal. I'd like to show this video of uh, Victor Hugo. You can see this is a fresh brain. The third cranial nerve, P1, in the right side. There is no communication between uh, the posterior cerebral artery that is coming from the supraclinal carotid artery. This is a fetal communicating posterior. This is about the circle of villages and there is a Another one, very nice one, sorry, mm. very nice video of this. You can see this Kata Equina, how he has injected the veins into blue and the arteries into red. And that gives a very good steady material for uh, understanding about the Kata Equina and the conus. It's all Kata studies. This is the Adam Kievich artery and the conus medullaris, the caudequina, and this is a, a small artery that goes to the filum terminale. Displacing these uh, root nerves we can see the arterial basket of the conus medullaris. And the posterior spinal artery. Uh, I've been to many, many cadaver labs in the world. Yeah. Uh, the best of my, my experience is at Chula Lab in um, Bangkok. This is one of the best labs I've ever seen. Uh, the cadavers are so so preserved very well. And the one plus point, one biggest uh, thing which surprised me was this. All the cadavers were the faculties of that hospital. The faculties of the hospital, they donate their, their body after their death to the teaching of the students of that particular university. And Chula Lab was an excellent experience for me. Uh, I spent about nearly three days. Uh, this is another lab in uh, China. Uh, to learn about uh, minimally invasive uh, uh, spine surgery. Uh, apart from this cadaver labs, you know, we are in, in India, in other places, we are regular with so many of uh, uh, model, model surgeries. But what it makes is that you have a large number of students, large number of students uh, to follow you. They dream about you, they think about you, and you become one part of such a huge community. And this is, uh, was the meeting at the Dandy meet at uh, J I mean, last year in Agra. It was very well conducted, nearly about 250, uh, 250 or 300 registrations. And uh, the amazing about the one full day, 
my my thoughts come back when i started my uh, first lecture this is at my madurai medical college when i gave my lecture in uh, madurai medical many many years ago probably in 93 that time the stiffy spinal fixation was the state of the art um and uh, dr arthur stiffy who introduced that and was uh, dedicated only for l4 and l5 i remember operating in the cadavers uh, in our government hospital and then implemented my teaching program to young students at kovai medical center this microscope was uh, gifted to me by dr suresh babu uh, uh, because he was not using that microscope so i have to uh, get it by courier uh, from uh, chennai to coimbatore to give training to my young spine fellows now does it end with this we do not end with that Uh, we this is one of a small young girl who uh, i mean one of my patients uh, daughter uh, very interesting she was very keen to know about anatomy she was very keen she wanted to know about anatomy <laughs> and i was wondering about how how she was so cute and her mother was uh, teaching her anatomy at home you can feel something down here that's your muscle and this is this is the muscle that you can feel can you feel it min see uh, everything in your body is connected this is this question mm -hmm. so what is that this this is well your fingers min this is the uh the tendon okay the tendon <laughs> yeah this is now now you can imagine that child is your student and you are there to teach it's a wonderful thing to share our knowledge and i have to end with my last slide i still feel that i am still learning at this point of time and i'm still doing the fellowship program people always say fellowship program ends with one month two months or three months or one year but my relationship with this gentleman professor ramani is more than nearly about 25 to 30 years we are again going to have cadaver labs uh, cadaver studies i like to end uh, my variation by saying that please uh, do not stop the fellowship on one single day and uh, don't expect uh, you need to get a certificate for your learning but then the fellowship is very long like you know i always teach i talk to ravi sir i talk to suresh babu sir about subject even now so the fellowship continues until we die Thank you very much for this excellent opportunity you have given to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.